Well, I suppose I have to go back uh, to my experience at Chichester when I met Keith. Uh, it was Keith who invited me to do a PhD on the basis of a very small amount of discussion with him. Um, and he seemed to think that I was capable of doing this. Um, and I read his books, Hayden White's books. Um, I began to understand history, I suppose, or histories as literary artefacts, which is what they are. It's what uh, Hay Hayden White characterised them. Uh, but more than that, they're, they're literary constructs, or his a any history is a literary construct that conceals or it uh, occults, depresses uh, its practice of construction beneath its surface. And it's just seemed to me that, I suppose for newcomers to history, particularly for students, that it's quite important to understand what that practice of construction is. Um, and that's where the focus should be. What's going on when a historian makes an epistemic choice to do this or to do that or to do the other? Where do those choices come from? What informs them? Is it the past? Uh, the answer to, for me is no, it's not. It's got nothing to do with the past. So I think that's quite important to consider from that direction, from that perspective. Well, this, uh, this is again Keith's fault because um, he invited me to do this PhD and uh, at the time that he did it, I was quite surprised, but at the time that he, that he made the proposal, to, uh, it, um, I'd just come from the university library and I'd been reading about um, Frank Ankersmith. He, it was a paper that he published on uh, presence. And I was astonished by this paper. Um, I couldn't understand really how anyone could promote such an argument. Um, and I did know something about Frank Ankersmith at the time. Uh, I'd read his Narrative Logic, his first book, and it was clear from the argument he laid out there that he situated himself well and truly in uh, the lang a language style of historical theory, the sort of style of theory that's now uh, associated with what's become the linguistic term. Uh, it was a logic, a fairly, fairly rigorous logic based on language. And what I couldn't understand was how the guy could move from that style of theory to a style of theory based on ideas of presence and historical experience, and particularly sublime historical experience as well, which, which incidentally is radically different by his definition than, uh, than historical experience. So it was that chance encounter I had, and just coming from the library having read about him, that interested me in his project in his work. Although at that time I didn't actually know a lot about it, I, it was just peripheral reading. Yes, well my recent book is my PhD thesis, uh, adjusted somewhat and then it was put out for publication. Um, the conclusions are, I think, that Frank Ankersmith's work, early work, is still very sound, it's very interesting. Um, but when he deviated, uh, when he went on this journey I called it in my book, his journey from language to experience, through various stages to this extraordinary theory of uh, sublime historical experience. I thought he'd somehow lost the plot. Um, and any of his uh, theory surrounding that, I would challenge. Um, I don't think that the arguments hold together, uh, and I've tried to demonstrate that in my book. We'd have to let the reader decide on that.